Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to episode 19 of the Speak Up I'm Israel event series. Catch up on previous events on YouTube via at Speak Up underscore I'm Israel. Engage with campaign using hashtag Speak Up underscore I'm Israel. Join us in empowering our Jewish community against mission uh, Christian missionary infiltration. Our episodes feature Torah educators, public speakers, influencers, and counter missionary experts sharing insights to safeguard our heritage. Welcome, everybody. I am Jesley. I'm so happy to be here with you. We have a wonderful guest today. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, hello. Hi. <laughs> Jesley, hi, Mr. Girl. How are you? What's up, <laughs> I know. I'm just. I'm. I'm really jamming out to this new song from Zusha, the brighter song. I've. I'm sure you've heard it. Um, Let's get it pumping in here. It's so my team. Exactly. Everybody, dance wherever you are. Let's go. Guys, Shira's like. She's the. She's the definition of simcha. She's the definition of a dar and what we supposed to be doing this month and how we're supposed to you know the just the ah uh, your simcha and your happiness just you know it overfills like instagram like let alone to be in a conversation with you it just like it's it's infectious like you know like it really it really is and i want to thank you for being you and like when i think of you and i think of your name i just like Ding, you know, like it's such a smile and it brings a smile it to my face. <laughs> <laughs> and that could that, that you have. If you me, it means that you have it in you too. That's what the Baal Shem says. So you also have a very strong Thanks. energy of Simcha. So, Bezrat Hashem, may tonight, may we bring down all of the or all of the Amen. light of Simcha for all of Amisrael. And may Amen. everyone who's watching, we invite all of you to join with us and tap into our Simcha and bring a lot, a lot of Simcha vibes. Simcha means joy. And this is our month of joy. And we have two months of Adar. We mm -hmm. lucked out this year. Mm -hmm. This is, it's needed. It is. We needed this one. <laughs> we needed this one. We, we really need this one. The Zat Hashem, our hostages will be home Amen. today, tonight. This Amen. Amen. Healthy, alive. Yes, that Mashiach will come this instant as well. Amen. And the final girl will be here. Amen. Is that so, Shira, first, uh, tell us a little bit what you do. Just, you know, a quick sum up of what exactly it is. You do on Instagram. Like, what is your deal? Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. You, you can sum it up in one minute. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't prevent my elevator speech. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So, um,. Some of you on Instagram, if you followed my page, so you think that I'm an influencer maybe, but really all of us are influencers. So, so yeah, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. But really, so I have a different um, page for the different missions that I enjoy doing in this world. So I have one for Israel passion and one for women's empowerment and one for comedy and, I, and one for art. And these are different things that I want to contribute to the world. And so I have a few different channels and ways that I do them. And some of you know my brand called Kosher Swag. There's a few different things that I do, but it basically all ties into the same mission, which is filling the world with more light and bringing the Geula, bringing Mashiach, which is the complete redemption, a time when the whole world will be filled of God's name. And however, however, each of us can do that. Each of us have a unique mission here on earth to do that. And we were all given different talents to bring the Geula. And each of us can do it in a really unique and beautiful way. And Bezrat Hashem, we bless all of us to be able to do our missions with a lot of Simcha. Amen. 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 And thank you so much for the intro. I'm going to introduce myself for your followers. My name is Jeslia. I go by just Jeslia. Well, I want to introduce okay. you. Jeslia is so awesome, everybody. If you're not already following her, go follow her. She is so amazing. She's full of good vibes. She is a musician. She has such a positive, amazing strength within her. And everybody around her can feel it. And she is my Latina sister. She's got the Latina vibes. And yeah, if you're not already following, go ahead and follow because it's worth it. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> So much. Along with that, I do want to just mention I um, because it's important for the conversation that we're going to have. But I actually um, I converted to Judaism 
uh, about it's 14 years ago already. Oh, yeah. I, my father was a, uh, an evangelical pastor, and I grew up in a family of a bunch of ministers and people who were very heavily involved in the Christian uh, missionary work and, uh, and um, the ministry and things like that. So um, 2005, we kind of just had our own journey, which you all can catch on Heat Up Roots. You can catch on my channel also. I have um, articles written about my story and just... Um, I opened up a dance group since I've been Jewish. I opened up a performing arts school here in Ramat B'Chemish. Many might know the RBS Dance and Music Academy. Um, it's one of the first um, women and girls uh, kosher, frum, uh performing arts school that was developed like 12, 13 years ago. And uh, it's Baruch Hashem. It's like now 250 of wow. women and girls just Incredible. like rocking it. And uh, the past four years, I, I started my own personal um, solo uh, singing career uh, in the Froom, you know, Jewish female industry that we have now apparently. And this is where it goes in, it ties in because I know Shira from Thank You Hashem and her collaboration. Ooh, thank you Hashem, represent! <laughs> A big shout out to Thank You Hashem because Baruch Hashem. I also had uh, my collaboration with Thank You Hashem on the Nashim Sitaniot album a couple of years ago and I had um, the honor and the privilege to do the um, what's it called, the cover of um, the male version of Thank You Hashem, which is really the Spanish version. I did Gracias Hashem for, so those who want to check it out, women, of course. Um, Amazing. It is, I can attest, that song will get you off the couch, jumping, dancing. <laughs> Definitely. So that's how we met. I think it was more virtually at first. And then last year, we finally met, and you go ahead and tell the story. Where do we yeah. meet? So we met, um, we were filming the Malky show. Shout out to Malky, we love you. And we were backstage and we were chilling and we were having such a good time. We were like having a really, really fun time. And, and you told me your story and I was just in, in awe of you. Like the strength that it must have taken from you to be able to have been raised in, in a certain way and then just leave all of it and realize what the MS actually was and then just come to Israel and you came here with your family, right? Okay. Like, At that point I was, uh, I had just gotten married with my son. So we all had converted wow. to Canada. So, and I'm home. I'm home now. Baruch Hashem. Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Yeah. Wow. Such a beautiful story. It's incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Shira. Okay. So let's dive into it. Today's topic is serving Hashem with fire. This is actually, I'm so happy I got to do this. We've been playing like on and off hosts with other, um, other friends of ours who are, you know, are also very passionate about this topic. And I got, um, I came back after a break and I got this topic and I was just like, oh my gosh, as in, as a creative person and as an artist and musician, this like totally, it sinks into my heart. Like, you know, I'm so passionate about it and talking about this. And it, it's, it's, it gives me a lot of strength and it gives me a lot of inspiration. It gives me a lot of, and I'm so ready to look, I have my notebook because I'm going to be from you and <laughs> to make sure that I am able to like lift this up for Hashem so um, let's start off with just a few questions and um, I want you to share briefly your story about why you left Hashem okay let the okay. connect you to Hashem I know it's like it could be, go on for days this conversation what connects you to Hashem the most and what gives you the quah oh wow Okay, <laughs> first, like, my first reaction is just like, how can you not love Hashem? Like, how can you not love Hashem? If a person is conscious inside of their bodies, like, living moment to moment, and not disassociating by doing different things that, like, disconnect themselves from themselves, and they're just really present in their body, how can they not love Hashem? How can a person not love Hashem? Like, just breathing inside of your nose, like... I went, uh, uh, a week or two ago, I had a cold, I had a flu, and I wasn't able to breathe through my nose properly, and like, it just blew my mind how every day we take it for granted, just breathing inside of our nose, it's the most simple thing, but it's life and Hashem, every second that we are alive and we are breathing, Hashem is literally breathing through us, He's giving us vitality, He's giving us air, and I feel like every moment that I'm alive, I can just tap into loving Hashem more and more and more by just recognizing, just taking just a second and like, just recognizing like, oh my gosh, like 
I'm alive. I am not in the hospital. I have all my limbs. Oh, Hashem. There's so many people, especially right now, that like Hashem Yerach and their life changed overnight. I went to go visit um, with volunteers uh, to the Tel Shomer, to the, the soldiers that came out of the front lines that lost their limbs. Young men who can't do their professions. This one man, he's he works in film and he lost his right hand he lost his arm he lost his right arm like he won't be able to do what he loves anymore so like just these just these little glimmers of realizing everything that you have and taking a second to really just sit with it you will be able to tap into loving Hashem more and more and more and more and also what really um, is coming up in my mind right now is just like we're so used to um, being on our phones, especially in this generation, because right now, Baruch Hashem, we're the generation of Geulah, and the thing that we're all on right now, our phones, just this minute, all of us are all on our phones right now, and the people who are going to watch this over, they're going to be watching it on their phone. So this tool is so powerful, and it has the koach to bring the Geulah, but it also has the, with everything in life, there's a good, and then there's the opposite. So with our phones, it has the ability to take us away from our present moment and disassociate ourselves from our body and from everything that we have. And the Baal Shem Tov says that wherever your thoughts are, that's where you are, all of you. All, all of you is there, wherever your thoughts are. So when we're scrolling and when we're looking at a lifestyle blog or whatever it is, and you're looking at this person's life, you and all of your thoughts and all of you is actually right there. And that is is really cool but it's also really harmful because then you compare yourself and you're like oh i don't have a life like them but naturally none of us have a similar life none of us have the same objects in our life none of us have the same body none of us have the same things so obviously their life is going to look very different than your life so we automatically compare and we automatically think what do I not have that they have? And that part of social media is really good at disconnecting us. And God forbid, I hate to say it, but it really does. It, hel it helps the yetarara, like feel mm -hmm. that God, God forbid, doesn't like us. But really, God really loves us. And it's just us doing it to ourselves. And it's just our mindset that's messing it all up for us. But really, that's the one of the shadows sides of what we're all on what of this social media situation that we're on and it really it makes us think like oh i don't have a, a bentley or a beamer like that person who i'm watching right now so 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 god do you even love me like that's where it puts us you know what i mean so yeah on one side it's like really amazing because we can all connect and we can all be here together and we can spread inspiration and love and connection and bring the gay love as well to shin but at the same exact time we have to be so careful that like we don't go into that area that we're like thinking like, oh, they have, a, you know, so that's um, something that just came up. And then another thing that helps me just, um, just feel the love from Hashem is just knowing that Hashem desires to have a relationship with me, with you, Leslie, and every single person watching this. Hashem desires to have a relationship with you. And he is so personally invested in your life. And you were given the power to co-create with Hashem. He doesn't just want to be the dictator that tells us everything what to do. He absolutely desires to be romantically involved in your life and just love you and show you all the ways that you can appreciate his love. And he wants you to speak about it and let him know. He wants you to really speak about it. Just like a spouse speaks to their partner that he wants us to speak about it. And, you know, let us, let him know, like what was bothersome? What was hurtful? What feels really nice? What, what do I enjoy? These kinds of things that, you know what I mean? So that's also, and then another thing that is really important segueing into that. Um, when Hashem chose us, we were at our lowest. We were in Mitzrayim. We were in Egypt. We were at the lowest point of spirituality. And if we went a tiny bit lower, we wouldn't have got out of it. You know what I mean? Like we, were, we would be in Egypt right now. Okay, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be pretty. We were at the 49th level of Tum'ah, Hashem Yerachim. And we were so low that we forgot who we were. 
and we believed what the Egyptians were telling us. We believed that we were slaves, and we believed them. We believed this lie that we weren't royal, that we weren't holy, that we weren't good. We believed them, and that was the epitome of the tum'ah, the lowest level of spirituality, the lowest, lowest, lowest level. It was that we believed the lie that we were not godly, that we were not divine, that we were not royal. When in reality, we are the daughters and sons of the king of kings, and we are so royal, and we are so loved, and we are so blessed, and Hashem saw us in that point where we were so soiled, and our dress was disgusting, ripped, and just we were full of dirt, spiritually and physically, and we were working our everything off we were working so hard and the women had the men's work and the men had the women's work and it was a it was so mixed up and we believed it and we thought we were slaves and it was just such a mess and that's exactly the point where Hashem said I see you and I want you only you and I don't want anyone else and I love you and you're beautiful and you are so divine and you are so holy and we're getting out of here and Hashem cleaned us up and He brought us to, to our true reality, which was being royal again. And He cleaned us up. We were always royal, but He revealed that we were truly, truly royal. He gave us beautiful clothes again. He gave us the Torah. And that's when Hashem chose us. And it just is such a beautiful reminder. Anytime that I'm just feeling, you know, a little bit like, wait a minute, like, what is going on? Like, hold on, Hashem, like, are you really there? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 he is. He chose me and you and all of us when we were at our lowest of the low, and he was like, I want you, I don't want anyone else. You are the most beautiful. And, like, that's when Hashem chose us. And when we are human and we are doing these, you know, things that are so human and we're perfectly <laughs> flawed <laughs> and imperfectly <laughs> spiritual and just, you know, we're just being human, those are the moments that Shem loves so much. He didn't choose us when we were perfect. And he won't choose us when we're perfect because we're not perfect. And if we try to be perfect, we're faking it and we're not we're not being real. And Hashem wants us to show up and be human and be ourselves because he has a crush on us. He's in love with us. And there's no hiding from him. And there's no shocking him. There's no like, oh my gosh, you did that? Like it's like he's like, okay. But yeah, you're human. So like, yeah, of course, that makes sense. Like, I love you still, but like, you know what I mean? So yeah, anytime that someone feels like maybe there's a question if Hashem loves you, just know Hashem chose you when you were like really not feeling cute and you were super not attractive. Hashem was like, I like you. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that just brings me into, I was just going to ask you right before all of that, that explanation is how is it that we get to that point where we feel that Hashem doesn't love us or, or, you know what I mean? Or or we're not good enough for his love or we can't love Hashem because we don't see him. You know, and it's exactly what you said. We came to a level where we're like absolutely 49th level of Tuma and we couldn't get out. And Hashem still saw us there down in the pit and then said, hey, no, <sighs> sorry. Yeah, it's so, it's so emotional. Yeah, it's like I, I still want you. You're not that. And I think sometimes in life, we just go through life thinking, no, I'm, I'm scum. I'm like, I don't deserve this for myself, this for myself, this for me. And what we're doing is that we're really telling Hashem, like, it's not possible. You are not possible. And we end up doing this and Hashem can't hear it. Like we're doing this. He's still here. He's like calling out to us. Like, no, you can, you can, but we don't hear it. Cause we're so loud yeah, we're like making, and we're so making our own, like, <laughs> and we can't hear him. And it's so true. We get to that point. And uh, thank you for, for saying it the way you did because um, that's that's the key is to the positive, you know, the simcha, the realization that we are royalty. We are sons and daughters of, of the king of the world. Wow. Thank you for that. <laughs> what advice on that? topic what advice um would you give to those um who are not sure of the purpose you know some people go through life and just not doing what they're called to be uh, doing here on earth and it, it it does make that separation i think because they're not you know they're not living to their fullest potential what do you what, what do you say for those who can't um who aren't sure of their purpose and how the best way to serve hashem is okay. 
time, a time. I think it was it was fifty words. Yes. <laughs> fifty words like that. this is water, by the way. Don't worry, worry. We're not going up. We're bringing too. Much. But like, <laughs> I made a breath already. The time to all of us, may we be zochet to realize that Hashem has an actual crush on us and He just loves us so much. Mm-hmm. And may we have the strength to release all the past and start again and just um, tap the love and the simcha of the Hashem. Hashem. Amen. Um, this one hits home. I like this question because it's like, when I was really young, I remember being so distraught that I didn't know what my purpose was. And I was like, what am I going to be when I grow up? I was so upset about it. I was like, I just want to know. Like, I want to know. Why can't I know? <laughs> you know, I was really, it was like, I remember being really young and just like, being like, but what How, what is it like i want to understand like can i should i be a judge like Dvorah Hanavia? i love Dvorah Hanavia. my middle name is Dvorah. i was like maybe i'm gonna be a judge maybe i'll be an artist maybe i'll be a this like i don't know i was like a doctor i want to help people like i i had that at a very young age and so as i got older i started to understand that the neshama is so versatile there's so many different sides to the neshama Shema, because it's a piece of God. It's you literally, you watching this right now, you have a piece of God, literally a piece of God inside of you. Like, that's first of all, that's mind blowing. That's amazing. And second of all, what comes with that? That means that you have a piece of infinity inside of you. So there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of differences happening inside of you. Your emotions will be very different extremely different and it doesn't mean you have a problem it just means you have a piece of infinity inside of you and that means you have all the universe and all the emotions and all the purposes and missions and everything and it's just like it could be overwhelming but the the beauty is that like on a macro level that's like on a macro level so it's overwhelming because like whoa like you have a piece of a shell inside of you and then on a micro level it's like Hashem gave you this specific piece of Hashem because this specific piece of Hashem has a special flavor that has never been brought to the world before and you are the parent of this little tiny little baby you can think of it as a little baby that you are given and you are trusted to take care of and to nurture and to love and to empower to become this beautiful bright shining spark that it is and with it comes so many journeys and it says that like when Yaakov Avinu when he was wrestling with the angel he is something that just came up <laughs> hold, hold up I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's gonna make sense in one minute you know it's like coming out of left field but hold on so Yaakov Avinu when he was wrestling with the angel for whoever wants a backstory um Jacob the, pa- the patriarch our father Jacob Avinu our forefather he uh, was wrestling with the angel of Asav his brother who wanted to kill him and when he was wrestling with the angels he, Baruch Hashem, thank God, he had a victory and he was able to conquer the angel and he was able to end the fight and he was victorious. And when he did that, the angel gave him a different name and he, his name was Yisrael. His name was first Yaakov and then he added Yisrael. And so his name was a combination of Yaakov and Yisrael. So you can easily say like, okay, so during life, you have all these different names, you know, when you're young, you, maybe you have a nickname or maybe you have like a little this, that, I don't know, something cute they call you. And then when you get a little older, you might have, um, they, people might call you Miss or whatever. You might have a different title. And then when you get your PhD, you're a doctor or when you're a uh, rabbi, then you are called rabbi or maybe you're called Rebetzin or maybe you're called a mom or maybe you're called uh, whatever it is. There's so many labels within life and within the journey of life. And then you're a grandparent and then you're a great grandparent. But the label doesn't actually mean or define all of you. That's just a part of you. So what I want to say to anyone who's like wondering about their purpose or whatever it is, like don't get stuck on your label right now 
out and think that's forever. Like you have a long journey. It's going to go by in a blip. Like we're here for this tiny little trip and we think it's forever, but like our, our souls are here for a specific mission and we have many different missions. We think it's like one, so we have to know right now what's my purpose, what's my mission. But it could be that every single day you are doing little bits and pieces and you're picking up these little sparks that all have to do with your mission here. And we're so used to the tabloids and like the big, you know, like, oh, he did this accomplishment. Oh, he has a PhD. Oh, look at this. Like he made it in life. Like we're used to that. So we're waiting for it. And we're like, when's it going to be my turn to shine? But maybe Hashem is putting us here for this journey. And along the journey, we have these little sparks to pick up and then you get a, a breakthrough and you have like a big milestone but it's not all about the milestone what got you there these little stones got you to that big milestone and then after that you have a bunch of little more little stones that like get you to another big milestone and it's not about the milestone it's about all of it so to anyone who's just wondering like what's your purpose here your first of all your purpose is to make this world a place for God to dwell in. That's why all of us are here. Whether you're Jewish or not Jewish, we're all here to make this world into a dwelling place for God. He desires to dwell here in this world. So that's what our job is. Our job is to make this world as, as comfortable for the Shekhinah, for God's presence to reside in. And how do we do that? We do that by refining, refining physical objects. And by making a blessing over water, we invite God's presence to be here and reside in this world and to be more comfortable, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more comfortable here, there. Everything we do has like a little bit more of that purpose of that big journey that we're all here for. And each of us do it in a different way. And that's his planning. We don't know what all of us, <laughs> we don't know what each of our curriculums are, what exactly our missions are, but along the journey, you're gonna be doing it. And then, it's going to be great, and we're going to have the Kibbutz Hashlema, Hashem, That's great. If I can just step in and just say, I think I have an idea of how anybody can find. I know, based on how the way I grew up, um, I did grow up in the, in the church, and um, since a very young age, my parents always told us, you know, uh, whatever your gifts are, whatever Hashem gives you, you know, focus on that, because that is the way you're going to serve Hashem, and at a very young age, at seven, eight years old, I discovered, like, my love of music was, not that I discovered at that point, but that's when I actually acted on it. I loved music. I loved music. I loved dance. And it was my expression towards Hashem. It was the only way that I can become vulnerable, you know, to really dig deep inside and to have that special connection. And from there on, I always said to myself, this is my purpose, you know. My purpose is either to sing, you know, use something with song, with music, with dance, and to be able to elevate it, to make it something worthy that Hashem, you know, a worthy of Hashem. And, um, and being even in the church itself, you know, I find myself, um, for a long time, I didn't understand the purpose. I thought, okay, it's only, you know, as we converted me and my family, I thought maybe, you know, it's just to tell a story and just to inspire people. And recently, it's come up again, but with a purpose, you know, like I once, uh, because of my singing career, because my story is on Kita Brut and on Aish, I thought, nobody wants to hear my story again you know no, also, I'm the only convert here anymore like maybe 10 years ago you know that, no, like, that's what we all want to hear a story again. Oh, thank you so i was thinking to myself being hard on myself there and um i said okay i'm not going to talk about my story anymore i just want to be the singer i want to be singing you know i want to use my music whatever I'm, um, i want to do and then after october 7th happened and then not only started talking to me and the you know the um the christian um the christians coming to israel and doing their missionary work and um more than ever i like i felt this calling like you know what that's like you know don't forget where you came from because this is why i brought you from there so that when you come here you'll be able to save the souls of your brothers and your sisters wow from going back. And actually this was a realization because as we were starting this, um, one of my friends, Liz Tatz, that lives in um, in London, she's actually Rabbi Kiva's, um, Rabbi Kiva? Yes, <laughs> Rabbi Tatz, uh, Tatz uh, sister, um, daughter-in-law, sorry. And 
she sent me a message and she said, um, did you ever realize that the reason why you converted to Judaism is to save other Jews from converting to Christianity? Wow. Boom. Like, I never had this boom, you know, like, in fact, when it came to my story, that it just turned my purpose and my story, a, a, like, a whole wow. 180. And my whole that like my perspective on you know like a um, perspective on it and uh i thank god for that because then i wouldn't have been so passionate about what we're doing right now and like speaking out against this and you know just even just have the clock it takes a lot of clock to do that but i do i recommend i suggest you know anybody who's trying to find a purpose to serve hashem like really dig, dig deep inside because that's what we were taught last week we read we were in uh Parsha, um Taruma, and and we talked about the Mishkan, you know, and how we all, you said, we're here to build a place where Hashem can dwell in. And in the Mishkan times, we all gave in of our gifts to build the Mishkan. And that was the only way that Hashem could come. And it was from our pure gifts, from the bottom of our heart of Hashem. I have this. I have this. I have this. What can you do? Help me find the way that I love doing this. Use my passion and my gifts that I have to elevate it and to serve you Hashem you know it's that prayer it's a personal prayer so if you are really struggling and find you know like I don't know what to do I don't know how to connect to Hashem I don't know what my purpose is dig deeper think about the things that you like and kind even if you have to make a list you know and say like ah you know sometimes you discover yourself you don't even realize I really like to do this mm -hmm. Hashem what is it that I can do to serve you better to do this you know, some people become teachers that they're really great at teaching. And look at, you know, we have this Judaism is just based on education. You know, like you can do it. You can find it and you just need to ask Hashem. You need to look deep inside yourself and really go for it. Mm -hmm. So that's my take. I mean, yeah, I, I love what you said. And it's so it's so true. And I remember always um, hearing like the the Rebbe videos. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Chabad Rebbe. Maybe you're familiar. <laughs> He's such such a role model for me. So he always it, um, emphasized that each neshama has like their toolbox here for their mission. They were given all these different tools in order to do what their mission is, and. And exactly what you said, it's like each of us has so many things that we're passionate about. And from there, you're able to know what, what Hashem wants from you. And there's a lot to share. May we be able to serve Hashem with joy, with simcha, with, with a lot of hatzlacha. There's a lot to share. Um, I think we covered one of the questions, which is, uh, but maybe you can give like a quick one, two, three. Uh, the question is, how do you incorporate the concept of serving Hashem with fire? into your daily life and spiritual practice. If you were to say, like, here's a list, you know, for the person who's just starting out and who wants to really be precise and just, you know, give it to them a little bit at a time, what would you say? <laughs> Sorry, I put you on the spot. <laughs> no, I, I just, um... One second, hold on, hold on. Let me tap in because for me it's like so obvious, but I don't, I want to like for me it's just like oh my gosh, like Hashem is amazing. Like how how can we not be like super excited every second that Hashem is amazing? Like He made the most beautiful world ever, and we're so lucky that we we won these little golden tickets to come here on a trip, and like we're so lucky. We're so lucky, like go outside and enjoy the world that Hashem gave us and just you're, you're being spoiled. Mm -hmm. You have so much good in your life and you don't even realize how much good you have actually. So just, I think, I think just focusing on everything that Hashem gives you. And for me, I, something that's like a daily practice, practice that I like to do is I have um, a notebook and I, write letters to Hashem and just I tap in it's like a, it's like a, it's really it is a real relationship for us and he's so personally he she Hashem there's no gender Hashem is beyond but I'm saying he sometimes because it's just more relatable but God is so invested in our 
lives and he and Hashem wants our lives to be the most enjoyable experience ever. And also we just celebrated Tu Bishvat and um, Tu Bishvat is the celebration of the trees and fruits are a luxury. We don't deserve fruits. It's not, you know, something that we need in order to survive. Fruits are a luxury and it's a pleasure and Hashem wanted us to enjoy this life with pleasure and with simcha and with luxury because he loves us guys hello he loves you so just that it just popped up in my head because we just celebrated it like a little bit ago but yeah so just knowing how much hashem loves you and however you um practice like your love language whatever your love language is you know there's like the love languages right there's like speech uh acts of service um kind words, appreciation, quality time, all those things. So find out what it is that you appreciate and how you appreciate showing love and try to incorporate that in your day-to-day -day life and show Hashem that you're actually in a relationship with Him. And it could be that, you know, you've been through a really hard past. Like, all of us have trauma. Let's not, you know, whitewash it or sugarcoat it. All of us have been through difficult times. But we are not here for a vacation. We are here to do something. And the hard times that you've been through got you to where you are today. And this isn't the end of your life. You have so much more to go. and It's not the end of your story. So if you can find the strength inside of you to release the pain and all the different things that you've been through in the past and be able to bring in love into your present moment and just appreciation for everything that you have been through because all of it was part of your master class curriculum that Hashem designed specifically for you in order to become the most amazing strong shining beautiful soul in this world so if you can get to a point of just appreciating that like that master class that you went through had all the special curriculum woven specifically for you nobody else had that curriculum only you had it and they say like pain is the professor you know because pain teaches us so much about ourselves about the world around us about the people in our lives about how we want to be loved and how we want to be respected or treasured or just teaches us so much so if we can get to a point where we understand that we have the strength to release the past and to take the good from it and to thank Hashem for creating a special curriculum just for us. <laughs> and then if we can bring that into this present moment, just this thankfulness of like thanking Hashem truly, fully, entirely, we will be able to have a really passionate, enjoyable, loving relationship every single day with Hashem and it might be that you need to do it multiple times a day because depending on how, how often or you know how often you might need to release you might have gone through a lot of different things that are very painful and your feelings are valid and what you've been through I'm sure is heavy and you're able to recognize that it's there and be able to send it off and give it a little bit of love and light and thank, say thank you Hashem. And Bezrat Hashem, may we be able to serve Hashem with passion and love and simcha and learn from whatever it is that we've been through in the past so that we don't have to continue learning that same lesson over and over and over again. Once we learn from it, we won't, we won't have to go through a similar type of experience because we pass the masterclass and then we won't be having the same type of pain in the future, Bezrat Hashem. Um, and yeah, just know that Hashem really, really does everything for you and he loves you and he's your biggest fan and he just keeps cheering you on and he's just like, yeah, you got this. Woo! <laughs> you know, really like this, there's a lot of love happening from above and tapping into that. Definitely. I have a story if it's okay of to course. share here of uh, just to make it personal. So you all see that um, I think we're all we all have these moments where we disconnect, we connect, and then we don't know where to find ourselves as well. You know, we're like in limbo and we're numb and stuff. So I remember when my family and I we left the church. Um, I was always very spiritual from a young age, even going into my teenage years. And the, we left the uh, church when I was eighteen um, years old. I was going to get married like um, within you know 
a few months later, I was going to be 19. Um, and uh, I always felt like I had this fire for Hashem because of what I do. I'm a creative person. Music is how I speak, how I connect to Hashem through my song is how I connect, you know. And even in church, I always felt like I had this connection, you know. It, it, it was a different connection, but I knew there was a connection and I was longing and yearning for, for Hashem. When we left the church, and we, I found myself in this kind of limbo because of all the changes that was going on. The the reality of knowing that I had to leave Abu Dazara, you know, and uh, really start from, I came from, my father was a pastor. So I thought of myself here. I know, you know, I know everything there is to know. And to start all over from literally Aleph Bet, you know, it, it like took a lot out of me. And um, I remember there was a point where getting married going through a conversion process um and then getting married again <laughs> with wow. my husband you know we had to get married again through and and then, then shortly after our conversion we made aliyah within six months it was really quick everything moved really quick but i found myself later on like i was on this pilot you know autopilot mode mm -hmm. and i was not mom and i didn't know why and i just like i just I knew I was connected in a way because here I am, I'm Jewish. I have to have had some type of emotional, you know, spiritual connection through this whole process. But looking back, I was like, I don't remember that. All I know is that Hashem took me from this place I was in. He needed me out of there. He took me out. And however means it was, he took me out and he brought me here. And then I found myself like, now what? I lost my purpose. We were a missionary Christian family. You know what I mean? What is there left? I I didn't finish my last year of high school because it was during my last year of high school, this whole big change in my family, you know? And then I'm like, then now I'm being kind of thrown into Yerushalayim. That's where we landed first. And and don't know Hebrew. I'm like, I'm. we're just freshly Jewish, you know? Now what? Like what Hashem? And so I went through this moment where I was just like such in a dark place such in a dark place and um and i just remember crying and crying and crying and then my husband just tells me he found me bawling in my room uh, one time and i was like he's like i'm like i want to go home i just want to go home he's like no we're home like get busy and then i remembered he's like go find a dance class oh. and I, I haven't danced since i left the church i haven't sang since i left the church it was like he told you know what i mean he took it away from me for a while because of the whole change that we had to go through and then he had my husband remind me where's your connection to Hashem you know wow and so from there I found it again and I I found a health factor in Yerushalayim I started dancing and I met one of my best friends in the whole world I never had a best friend growing up not even ever I was never that person who had a I friend, best friend. I wish we were <laughs> I wish we were in the same place. <laughs> would have been friends. And so, like, I met her, and we were so close. We ended up starting the uh, the RBS Dance and Music Academy here in Ramon Bachemas together. It, I had a friendship that was like a sister, like a real sister, you know, like BFF. And I found my purpose again because it wasn't just for me. Like, we had all these women and girls who were longing for this creative expression that they didn't know this Ramapa Chemish is a Haredi you know city especially back um in 2011 there was nothing like we were offering and the look on the girls when they were doing these dance moves and knowing that it's to kosher Jewish music it was just it brought up their nesham, the neshamot and with that me too you know like like wow. the fire was like kept on going for years all of a sudden a few years ago um Hashem put a stop to it. That's what I like to say. Um, he brought me out and I left the academy uh, to my friend, um, Chiquette, and um, I was going to do some other plans. Me and my husband went to, to Florida to, to do Kiruv, to work on Kiruv. We wanted to see like a two-year plan, two-year plan, and then we come back home to Israel. It was that year right before oh. COVID, in 2015, like August, September, oh COVID God. hit. And then we're like, we're going home. We're going back home because that's when all, like everybody was showing these pictures of empty streets here. And we're thinking, Mashiach's coming and we're oh. over here. No, oh eight and a half 
half months pregnant. No. It, like, yeah. You got on a plane at eight and a half when you were about to give birth, like, basically. <laughs> birthing pains. Oh, um, I I had to lie to the airlines to like say, no, I'm eight months pregnant. I'm fine. We came, Baruch Hashem, we came and like, and then with COVID already, it's already so bum. It was already so bumming the whole situation and being, you know, stuck inside our homes. I got more into like, a, okay, now what? I don't have, I'm not back at the teaching at the academy. Like, I don't have that anymore. Hashem, what did you do? Like, I'm now back at zero. You took everything from me. Like, I feel like, you know, what is the purpose? And then like, I came to this place where I was like in such a dark place. I couldn't find myself. I really couldn't. And I would just go from this to this and this. Like, it's like the limbo thing. You know, you just find yourself and it's just not working out. You're frustrated and you're just feeling numb. And um, and then I just remember I just kind of had it. And I was just in the most darkest place where I was just thinking. There was no numb, just numbness. I didn't know what was going on at home. I didn't, like, I lost my connection. And I just hear this whisper literally a whisper and i say sing to me sing to me and i promise you it hashem it was like hashem was telling me you did the dancing part you did a tikkun from what you did back in the day in church all of that i haven't heard you sing to wow. me since then you know and i was just like are you kidding me like i haven't sang in such a long time i don't know how to write music He's like, and I just kept saying, hearing like these words, Ganki Elif, Ganki Elif, you know. And I yeah. sat down away and I wrote my first song. Wow! Oh my gosh. It came so natural to me. Wow. I was just pouring out my heart, and I think this is this is the moment where I was feeling like this is the fire oh. that I was that I was missing. This is the connection that I was missing with my with my God, you know. Just me and him talking. Even if I'm at my lowest place in the world, he gets it. And he doesn't care that I'm telling him about that dark place. You know, because he's there on my song. It says, you're crying there. And with he me. loves it. Not only does he care, he loves, he, wants, it. he loves He loves that you're opening up to him. It's like so, oh my gosh, so emotional. Just, yeah, that's so, oh. Now, anybody who's tuning in, I do have my music out. I'm now a singer i have my music out it's how i connect to my creator my yeah, thing. Let's go, let's go. in hopes that you know like through my music people also connect there you know a lot of people they tell me um your music sounds like christian music and i was like it is i'm influenced by that like maybe it's something that somebody needs you know yeah. because that's where i came from and that's what i need i need that feel not that it's christian music but i need to feel you know it's a certain it's a genre meaning it's a genre and everybody connects to a certain genre that gets to them and that really helps them grow and i'm happy that i'm able to provide it in a jewish kosher kosher way so anyway thank you guys for listening to that story it always brings me to tears because oh. actually, if you hear the recording of it i am crying during the recording um and um, it's something that will always be with me it's very special it's very very special to me so thank, thank you for for tapping into your neshama and hearing what your neshama was telling you your neshama was like sing sing we this is us we gotta bring the song to the world it's so beautiful thank you okay so all of that being said we're going to talk about I'm, I'm happy I like brought it up here and here and there. Um, since the uh, October 7th um, situation that happened, mm -hmm. we've known that we've, we're in this place. We've been, we were in this place. I think we're a little bit more stronger than we were. We're trying to be. We know what we need to do, kind of. But at the beginning, it was a very vulnerable place that we were in. We didn't know what was going on. It was mm -hmm. just, you know, a big shock. And with that, not only did we have this infiltration of Hamas, you know, coming to physically harm us, you know, but we did start having uh, Christian missionaries come into Israel, come into Jewish communities because of their belief. Without their, um, even realizing that they were Christian missionaries, by the way, like to just to add, like, you know, there's so many. I, I don't know if uh, any of you guys follow, but like even Nate Buzz, like he has no problems you know speaking about right. it but like right, right right for sure 
that's one of the persons that I first um, realized that there was a problem, a, a red alert problem, meaning that after October 7th, I think we all understood after a few days, after a few a couple of weeks that we were in literally, we're in Mashiach times. It's like, this is the final countdown type of thing. And I don't think we, we, we grasp it right away. We all work together, but also we forget that we have this world, the Christian world, who believes in this as well. But they believe that we all have to come here together in Israel in order for their Mashiach, their Yeshu, their false, you know, God to to come back again. And then, you know, it's a whoever's not um, for whoever's watching and needs a little bit more of an explanation. So when you say that the missionaries come to Israel, so it's not just any Christians because some Christians are not missionaries and they actually are, you know, interested in just helping and being there for for Israel. But there are specifically missionaries what is their goal like as someone who was raised in that culture can you explain more about it like what is the goal and what do they try to do and definitely for those of you who are just tuning in we have a few series already this is episode 19 i believe of um of the speak up um there's a lot of information on uh the christian missionaries that have been infiltrating israel but that they've been here they've been here for decades already um creating communities within our Jewish communities, infiltrating, pretending to be Jewish and performing uh, mitzvot along, like for example, Brit Milot, and um, they'll you know, marry a Jewish couple not being Jewish themselves. Um, it's been a big problem. Some of them were outed um, and uh, deported back because of this reason. It's a, it's a big problem. And the reason that it's a big problem, a lot of people, they, um, they see the the niceness they see the the heartwarming you know the the um the caring gesture that comes out but a christian and i'm saying this from experience because i grew up christian is that we are uh, we were taught and a christian is taught to um is taught a in the new testament to to missionize to jews to missionize around the world they want everyone to become christian to believe in their in their in their false god as the messiah and that's the only way that we have salvation so for them to come into israel and what they do is that they, they begin little communities and then they'll missionize a few people there and a few people there if i can i want to share some facts from uh, a few of the organizations that we've had here in the past there's um i don't know if anybody knows rabbi tobia singer he's been a great uh, asset to am israel he teaches um the the false doctrine of the of the christian faith okay um and he his mission is to take jews out of the church who are already there um there's also Beinenu, who they're anti-missionary, um, the counterfeit um, anti-missionary works. I'm sorry, and um, they they work on these communities to get you know to to make sure that our people are not in these communities here in Israel. Mm -hmm. Since 2015, I believe there was about a hundred um, missionaries here in Eretz Israel churches here who are going out to preach their gospel and to bring jews in okay now there's over 350. wow it's a, a big issue i'm going to read just a bit um naomi wanted me to read this the groups in israel that actively seek to convert jews to christianity are primarily fundamentalist evangelical christians like you said not every christian is a missionary but every christian does believe in the idea that all jews must believe in yeshu uh, in order to obtain salvation, that we all must come to Israel to for their second coming of their Mashiach. This is a fact. Even if they're not here missionizing, they do do they do have the belief. They do have the they do support the missionaries. Interesting. I, even even by mon, mon, like monetary. Monetary. I know that there's so many Christians outside of Israel who support Israel and like I'm friends with some Christians as well and I never felt that they pushed their beliefs on me but it's interesting that you say that like growing up in the culture I'm sh you know 
way 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 more than any of us here watching so you're able to really let us understand more about like what is the actual belief so would you say that even though someone isn't um, pushing their belief on you they they still have like a core belief that that is the correct way to be that absolutely needs to believe in avodah zarah and thinking that a man is god god forbid absolutely that- they do believe they it can be very friendly but at the core they know that um this is not the way it's supposed to be they know that deep inside they believe oh this person this jew is blinded you know that's what they're taught this jew is blinded and they're going to they're going to face the truth when mm-hmm. when yeshu comes so it's kind of like a relationship that um you know like it's kind of like a friend who has an intent like intentions you know that they'll be friends with you at certain they'll give you this and this and this but their intention is to do something else later on down the road mm-hmm. you know it's kind of like that and um they i'm not saying that this is an evil practice like meaning they're not doing it to be evil these are good people like i have family like i said i have family uh because i came from this my grandparents my cousins and you know my my extended family my husband's family they're all christians they're still there it's we were good me growing up in it it was came from my heart we were good people who you know we believed in this mm-hmm. but at the end of the day we know what our torah teaches you know we know how hashem feels about abu dazara and it comes into place with whoever for whoever is just tuning in out or not aware of this that abu dazara is idolatry and the act of believing that a human being is a god or is you or, know the son of god that is avodah zarah that is idolatry and that is not god does not like that not a fan of it right <laughs> not into it right so that's the whole issue the whole issue is that you can't assign a human being like that he is better than everyone else in the world because he is god or because he is a vision of god or like you know just going back to basics cuz i'm sure there's some people who like are not so clear about what that right and it uh, it has to do with the fact like recently since the war started we see it more happening because of um their belief in the coming days in the end days you know uh mm-hmm. like i'm for and they're doing it more in an aggressive way um in a polite beautiful heartwarming you know like uh you know like our jewish brothers and sisters we feel your pain type of thing mm-hmm. but mission for example they'll come here and they volunteer they go uh there's many videos of um of uh soldiers in the IDF who are jewish but who were converted by missionaries who now oh are in the inside and our IDF converting our own soldiers while we're fighting in this war no this is no act this is publicized on videos they're announcing we're going to spread the gospel they give out little sidur like um little torahs that are in hebrew in hebrew but they have they they uh, implemented yeshua in them oh my god this, this is, is all known facts it's hard. a deceive, it's a very deceiving way that they're trying to get us like and this is for usually they they prey on people who at risk you know at risk teens um more uh holocaust survivors people who go and volunteer like um what's it called our our volunteer organizations here in Israel that package food a lot of these places are run and funded by christian organizations and what happens in return i'm here to deliver this package do, do you want to talk for a while can i come in on our old on our elderly let's talk for a little bit they show that warmth they show that concern you know what i mean and there you go they they're trying to convert our you know our elderly our people who are in poor people who you know who are needing the financial right now it's more the i mean Israel as a whole because what we went through we're all vulnerable you know but soldiers wives there's organizations now that they're going to to do events and making food like christians are making food for our for our soldiers wives for our so for our soldier bases like it's it's been a big problem it's been a big problem and this is the point of Naomi starting this initiative 
which um first of all a shout out to naomi she's amazing she has Hi. You, Naomi. Love you. Love you. Love you. and just focusing on this mission and you know like i said this has nothing wrong to do with christians as a as a as a whole or even in a degrading way it's about education it's about knowing you know internal like there's outreach and then there's in reach this is all about in reach we're not saying like people are evil or bad we're just saying like we have to be on the defense to know that this is something that's happening and we need to be take extra measures to to be extra cautious with our yeah do our judaism because more than anything right now it's the last moments of the galut of the exile and these are the moments that count the most where right before the sunrise it's the darkest the sky is the darkest right before the sun comes up so we are in those last right. moments where the sun is about to come up but the sky is so dark so dark so we need to if anything we need to increase 100 times more into our Judaism and 100 times more increase in Torah and mitzvot and God forbid not the opposite and that's something that's threatening correct Jewish people here in Israel and not just here in Israel I know also outside of Israel it's it's something that's right. going on also just to add like how you said we're very vulnerable right now and especially because so many Jewish people are looking to have approval and to be seen as a good person because we are having so much bad rep in the media that we are so excited so excited when when Gwyneth Paltrow writes that rape isn't resistance we're like whoa she loves Jews yeah. like oh we love her like we're so we're way oh we're out of line with that I just have to say we are out of line we need a we need to reel it back in right. and we have to stop caring what the world thinks and we need to focus in fo stay in our lane we gotta focus put on the horse blinders and stop caring about what the whole world thinks because that is exactly what happens before god forbid a nation has a downfall they're so busy like they're like oh <laughs> you know so we really thank you Jazlia, for like bringing this up because it's so important that we it's and it's uh, important because just the way that we're watching ourselves on the physical you know physical we're here in Hamas and our soldiers are out on the front lines they're doing their work physically for us you know they're helping us whatever we have to just like when it started what were we doing soldiers even those who weren't wearing before tefillin tzitzit we're arming ourselves you know we're gearing up because we're fighting a battle but we're also fighting a spiritual battle not only with Hamas as well but we have to be so you know we have to be aware of our surroundings and the infiltration that's coming in because not only we see that all social media that they're trying to take away our identity, you know, being Jewish and, um, you know, it's also happening on the spiritual side here, but it's very subtle and it's very quiet That's because the they're most taking our dangerous. That is the most dangerous, most dangerous. There's a saying, the that saying that in Hasidut, there's a saying in Hasidut that like the, the Yetzirah, the worst tactic, the most effective tactic that the Yetzirah, the evil inclination uses, is when it dresses like a tzaddik. Like there's a saying, like the Yetzirah in a sartuk and a, and a shrimal and a long beard, and it makes you think that it's so holy, and it tells you to do this because it's so holy and it's good. Like that's exactly the one that like we got to call out and make sure that we know what's what and what not to do, what to keep focus on and what not to, what to stare away from. Right. Right, definitely. And there's a saying that says that um, that that even though the physical harm that's being done to us, you know, it's it's drastic. It's it's horrible. You know, when it comes on our spirit, the spiritual side, it takes it way beyond the grave. You know, we ha our, our neshamot are affected, and that's even beyond our bodies, our our shell, whatever. You know, you know, our neshamot. We are neshamot. We're not a body. Mm -hmm. We are neshamot. You know, so it goes way beyond the grave. So it's about educating ourselves. It's about being aware. These campaigns have been here to kind of just kind of, you know, show people, you know, or like what is it that uh, the Christian missionaries are doing so that when they're walking down the street and they hear something, a red flag will come on, you know, and they're able to defend themselves like, no, this is what Torah says. I don't care what your Bible says. This is what Torah says. You know, and if that person is wearing something that makes him look totally Jewish or he looks like he's a rabbi somewhere, like we have to be even more aware of what exactly what you're saying. How can you give us like a few just um, practical 
tools on how to know immediately like if someone's trying to convert you to Christianity? Well, the most obvious is first of all there like I said there are episodes that we've spoken a lot about this but um say there's the most obvious reads like someone's gonna just come into your face you know I've had several people who have messaged me DM me um, in the past series and told me oh my neighbor just came you know like and it's the first time that she gives me a flyer and she's inviting me to church you know and they've been neighbors for like the longest mm -hmm. time and then for the first time it's things like this first of all it's things like um, when they give Give you a a Tanakh or a a Chumash that's that's Hebrew. Make sure you're watching for the words. You know, don't take anything from don't take anything from strangers, guys. <laughs> and also, that's number one, <laughs> it's there. going back to your school, don't take things from strangers. Unfortunately, also for your kids, I just want to say when I was younger, I remember I I grew up in America, but I was approached many times by missionaries, and they would give me like these cute as a little girl. They would give me these cute little like cartoon books and about all this they're like hey little girl do you like to read and i was like out in nature and i was like yeah why they're like here here's a <laughs> like give me this book and then i come home and my parents are like where did you get that oh my gosh Jira, <laughs> i'm sorry because i was one of those i know what books you're <laughs> <laughs> to be honest they have a good illustrator oh gosh Yes, that is one thing they do, and they target the kids. They target the kids, my gosh, they do. And uh, one thing to look at is because nowadays it's not really that simple, unless you're an expert, you know, unless you you're really listening out. Because now they speak our language. Now they speak our lingo. This famous celebrity that's here, he says, you know, he says Hashem, he says Chesed, he says these words and this and this, you know? Right, I was watching, I was so shocked because I didn't know that he was um, here to convert people without people realizing. But I realized when I saw a video of him in a prayer circle and he started speaking all about Hashem and you have all these families of the hostages around him. And he's, right. talking, he's praying and he's like, and let's invite Hashem into this. And then he calls, he, and then he called Hashem Yoshua. And then I was like, oh shoot we are really in bad shape like this yeah. is really not okay and nobody caught it there no one caught it because their brains are on anybody the planet they're experiencing the worst pain and the worst trauma of their life so their guards are not so i don't on it that it's that they can catch it i think we've become a little like i said numb we've become okay with it saying that we don't realize anymore that there's that line that boundary that we put for every single thing that we do and prohibitions for us that line has become blurred for the sake of unity for the sake of mm -hmm. the only ones who are on our side so you know let's let them let's let let's 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 unite we're more stronger together when we need to have that strong boundary because then what happens you're letting it seep in through our whole communities and by the time you know it they've converted a hundred of our kids oh, that's for sure. because he said it's okay they're fine they're friends of ours they're not and like for example this famous celebrity this we're gonna speak um he's a very very christian guy very christian guy he's very spiritual and religious why would he not preach his gospel to people who he knows that don't know about his his you know his god like he's not just here and be like okay you know he's not just here with his girlfriend and just like you be jewish i'm like this that's it we can live in perfect peace and harmony there's no such thing i saw there's take groups to go get baptized in nazareth and i was so shocked and my heart hurt so badly from watching that i couldn't couldn't believe that i couldn't it's so beyond it's like right. a horrible movie it's a horrible movie i think we need to just be aware of what's going on i think um in social media and things because of what's happening i we find it that it's happening a lot and we're okay with it i think that's one of the questions that my my questions just i know we're a little running late if that's okay i just wanted to ask you a few questions but that's one of the questions is that how how do we get to this point 
that look when I converted um, there is a wrong there is a yes and there's a no you know coming from a Torah perspective that there's laws and there's you know um, and it was a very strict way to be mm -hmm. we had to all of Avodazara behind it. any type of influence that we had any type of ideas that we had like I told you we had to start from the beginning like if I didn't know anything because everything that I learned when I was a Christian had to do with the coming of Yeshu had to do with the story of Yeshu even the biblical stories in 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 Genesis even in even you know everything I learned even to even the story of David and Melech there's references that the Christians come and they change the whole concept of Tehillim to fit the story of Yeshu in our prophecies also. So how is it that now, and I don't know if it has to do with the point of social media and us wanting to be accepted by the world that we just kind of we're blending in and we're saying we're going to rallies that we're chanting. We are one. We are one with a pastor who is leading us in that in this chat what, what are we doing what is why are we get why aren't our rabbis saying something about this why are we taking it important i'm going to be honest with you we've spoken to several rabbis and represents um in the past three months about this topic and we are not getting the response that we thought we would saying that, that it's not a big deal no Oh, it's fine. Like it's really not a big deal with everything that's happening. It's really not a big deal. Kind of like, like, you know, floored at the response. Like, we're supposed to be taking care. Our leaders are supposed to put that that boundary, yeah. and we're finding that it's not being done. It's not being talked about either because it's not. Trust me. This is not a popular opinion. This is hard for me to come on because you know what? Just in this conversation alone, I have seen a few of my family members come in. This is hard for me to talk about. But you know what? I also want them to leave Abu Zara. Even if they don't convert to Judaism, if that's not, you know, I believe that my family come from Anusim. I really believe that. But even if they don't, to leave Abu Zara, I want them to have a clean connection to Hashem. That's what I, that's what Or La, Go, La Goim is about. We are the lights of the nations. We all, at the end of days, are supposed to serve one God. Recognize that Hashem is the King of Kings. He is the only God in the world. Shema, you know, like Hashem Echad. I just, I also wanted to add to your point that all of us, Jews, non-Jews, whatever color, flavor you are, every single one of us has been commanded to believe in one God. This is against the law for all human beings to believe that a human being is God. It is not allowed. The Gentiles have the seven mitzvot of Noah, no, the Noahide laws. And the first one is you cannot believe that anyone is God besides for God. There is one God for, he's sorry, there's one God for all of us. There's one God for all of us. And that is the whole issue. Like, they also have a very important yeah. commandment. So it's not that we're, you know, being like the strict people who are so like overprotective. No, we're actually doing a chesed. We're doing a kindness. Just think of it this in way. In order to do their mission in this world, they absolutely need to believe that there's only one good. God right. Good. Think of it this way. I, I believe we are the only religion or whatever it is. We don't convert people. We don't. We, we push them away. When people want to convert to Judaism, we're like, no, no, the cool is not that good. Don't do it. No, no, don't. no. <laughs> For real. Like, because we believe that we have our mission. There's a people that Hashem chose, and we have our purpose, and the nations have their purpose. But under the understanding and the knowledge that we believe in one God, all of us together, and we'll be able to serve. Your, the Goim are part, the nations are part of this master plan. It's a beautiful thing. And just in case, for those of you who don't know the Noahide laws, who don't know about B'nai Noach, um, Naomi just had our first conversation yesterday to speak up about B'nai Noach with the founder um, who, ha who, who lives here. There's a uh, Noahide center here in Yerushalayim, okay? They're getting things ready. Um, there's another one going on tomorrow with my father, actually, who's a uh, who's been doing the works and with... Um, B'nai Noah and uh, Nusim and coming up with projects to also help. There are a lot of B'nai Noah who want to come to Israel to help. 
with wow. the right motives to serve us, to come and be a helping hand to the Jews without the Tuma that they bring when they come as idolaters. They step on this land and it's a big problem when especially in the land we come, we have people who come who are bringing their, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's the truth. You know, and it feels horrible to say this because I know that people do it with their heart. They serve whatever they believe in with their heart. But at the end of the day, there's Hashem and there's a met. And we're taught, you know, we're taught that the Tumah, Hashem cannot do well when there's Tumah. We have to push it out the way so that Hashem can come and dwell with that. And if that takes all of us, our brothers and sisters, to come home finally, you know, so that we don't need help from, we help each other, we help ourselves, you know, and bring those who really, you know, who aren't. I really believe that the more that we put these boundaries, the nations are going to be asking why. That's a famous thing that House of Lev, I know, I know you know them, Akiva and Chava, they said one time, is, and it's very true, when a convert converts, it's because we, 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 we came to this, and we couldn't do this. We couldn't go past it. The truth meaning. We were searching. We searched. We searched. And we're like, why don't the Jews come? You know, why don't the Jews believe in Yeshu? Why don't they accept in this and this and this? And they keep searching. And they search and they search until they finally find why. And they find the truth in Hashem. And they find, ah. Oh. And then that's when they want to convert. There's nothing. Or they just like, I'm leaving everything behind. And I just want to believe in Hashem. You know? Mm -hmm. If we do that and we put these boundaries more up with our fellow Christian friends, they'll get the and they'll search for Hashem. They'll really want to know why are the Jews, you know? And we and the funny thing is that we've been like that for a long time and apparently for generations. We've been like this for a long time where we keep to ourselves for a reason mm -hmm. so that we stay ourselves, you know? So we keep our Torah, so we keep our Judaism because we've always had people trying to infiltrate, always to try to take away our Judaism, our purpose. And I believe this is what serving Hashem with fire is. Is really. I wanted to add something to your point. So it's so important. And if there are are people on here who aren't Jewish, there's um, a well-known understanding like that each human being that is here in this world is part of God's army. We're all part of the same team. We're all working towards the same goal. And it does not matter what your battalion is. Each of us have a specific mission and it does not matter what your, you know, brigade is. Each of us are here for a purpose and all of us are here to serve Hashem and nobody's better or worse, or higher, or lower. Just because a person is, you know, Jewish or not Jewish, it doesn't mean that there's a grade. We're all made in Hashem's, in God's image. We're all divine. We all have a piece of God inside of us, and we all have something beautiful to bring to the world. And Bezrat Hashem, when we do acknowledge that God is one, <laughs> one, and there's nothing else besides Hashem, <laughs> it will be the Geula, it will be redemption. And we will see all of the evil and all the darkness just be wiped away from the world forevermore. Lot Hashem may be right now. And mm -hmm. also I wanted to say one last thing. Um, the No, not last because you say whatever you wanted to say. I'm sorry, I just interjected. But okay. just this thing that popped up was like throughout the whole lineage of, of, you know, the whole world, since the beginning of time, there's always a little bit of evil because there has to be choice free choice in this world so throughout every single generation the evil dresses up in a different costume and it you know like just last you know 75 years ago it was the Nazis they were they were wearing they were wearing a certain uniform and that's what was the most evil thing in that generation was the most evil thing in that generation but in our generation right now the evil is so dispersed and there are so many different places that it pops its ugly head up into and just because it's not wearing a Hamas, Shimam, Hamas uh, uniform it doesn't mean that it's not evil there's many different 
facets and many different ways that the Yetzara and the evil is trying to get into our situations. And also when you mentioned about like the rabbis, why they're not, you know, being so concerned about it. I'm just thinking like it could be that for them, they're so sure about their duties and that it's like a joke that they, they're like, oh, we have to make sure that the soldiers have helmets right now because there are many soldiers that don't have helmets right now. So like they're just not thinking with all of their head right now because they're in a state of panic because it's like, you know, we're in the middle of the war. But for all of us watching, it's really important that just because you're strong in your Judaism, it doesn't mean that this is not important. This is so crucial. This is so important because we're seeing that the Yetzirah, the evil, is showing up as this right now. There are, Hashem Yerachim, Jezliah just said that there are soldiers who have been converted. God, Hashem Yerachim, like it's such a horrible thing to even imagine. It's going on, so that, on right now. There are missionaries. Okay. Are our soldiers right now and it's already hard enough to fight a war that we're in let alone go in there and have somebody confuse your identity in the process and make you vulnerable and put you in a place of tuma you know like and the the what it comes with so it's it's very scary and also with our our soldiers wives who are alone with their kids you know people who are coming to their homes and offering their services and also speaking it's all Guys, it's happening right now, and it's not. It's we're not only dealing with Hamas. We're not only dealing with um, Ishmael. We're dealing with uh, Asab as well, you know. And um, Chira, thank you for for saying that very publicly. And uh, like you said, I think it is the fact that w w you hit it. You hit it on the on the point right there where you said the rabbis are are thinking that they're not affected because they know Torah. But what about their neighbors, friends, what who's uh, children. Yeah. It could be that their children have a maybe one little question, and it could be that a missionary comes in and and you know gets them right there. It could be, God forbid, like it could. I, I'm a daughter of very religious people, and when I was young, I was approached by missionaries, and thank God that my parents caught, found those little, you know, <laughs> illustrated books, because like you know, it could. God forbid, I wouldn't be here today talking about this. No, but it's really serious. It's very, very serious that, like, just because you are strong in your duties and doesn't mean that, God forbid, it's not, like, second degree. So make sure that your children know about it. Make sure that your neighbors know about this. This is a very serious thing. And, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. Besides everything that we spoke about right now, are there any specific messages or lesson? I know we just kind of summed everything up that, um, but that you want everybody to take away with this episode. Hizuk, connection to Geula, to Mashiach. Just to know <laughs> that we are so lucky to be here in this, these last few moments right before the Geula Shlema. We are so lucky. And I know there's so much pain every day when we open our phones and we just see the most horrible news. Like, it's just, at this point, it's, it's, there's no words. There's no words to describe like our situation right now is just beyond. But r the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Lazar, he teaches us that we are amazing creatures, that our hearts are able to feel two extremely opposing emotions at the same exact time. So as much pain as and, and sadness as we are feeling right now because of all the unimaginable losses that we've endured, we are able to physically be able to feel the extreme opposite of joy in this very moment and just to be aware that we have this superpower we are able to tap into joy and don't feel guilty like oh my gosh like how can i be happy right now like it's horrible there's so many bad things happening like no that is the yetara dafka specifically in these moments right now your joy is so important and we are in the month of adar and there's 60 days of joy and it is the ammunition that you have that you are able to bring strength to our soldiers to their wives to all of Yisrael, to the whole world you are able to bring so much strength by tapping into the extreme opposite of of what we're all feeling collectively and just dive right into the joy think of everything you can to feel joy and just experience joy and to spread joy and to tap into the light because right now 
is the turning point. We're very lucky to be here. Hashem showed the generation of Mashiach to Moshe Rabbeinu, to Aaron Cohen, to all the Avot and Imaot. He showed them the generation and he said, do you want to be a part of that generation? And they said, please, no, no, don't put us in that generation. Whatever you do, we're really happy right here in these biblical, you know, to know uh, those little like not what that they wear in the desert they were like we're chilling we out here we don't need them <laughs> so, happy back then they were like no don't don't please 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 billboards instagram they were like oh heck no so we were chosen to be in this generation that Moshe Rabbeinu and our avots were just like no don't put us in there because they didn't they were just like nah which is understandable because we're in a really difficult uh, generation right now, but, but we are here and we're not going to play the victim card. We are going to flip it and we're going to say we're so, so lucky that we were chosen to be a part of the most amazing, amazing point of, of the world where we are going to see the light win over the darkness, we are going to say, see, good win over evil. We are going to see it. We are seeing it right now. We are going to see wonders and miracles bigger and brighter and better than even the miracles and wonders that happened when we left Egypt. Amen. It's written that we are going to see it with our own eyes. We are going to see miracles and wonders greater than, than what we saw then. And all of our souls are the same souls that left Egypt from the Exodus. It's uh, the Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe says that our souls, the souls of this generation of the Geulah, are the same exact souls that were in that Exodus. And it's going to be in merit of the righteous women. So all of our righteous women on here or <laughs> around the world, you have the power inside of you to tap into your simcha and the righteous men as well. Because when your wife is happy, then you're happy as well. So just <laughs> tap into that happiness and your wife is going to just skyrocket into her higher self. And we're going to have the Gilash and Love as Ratashem Miyad. Amen. You are loved and you are royal and you are good. Even, especially when the whole world is telling us that we're not royal, we're not good, that we're evil, that don't listen. Mute it all out. We know the truth. We're not going back to the 49th level of Tuma where we believe them. We're not going to believe any of the lies. We know who we are. We are the daughters and sons of the King of Kings, Melech Malchai Amlech Makadosh Baruch Hu, the one God for all the world, and we are going to witness our redemption. And they're going to be in the Geulah Miad celebrating in the Beit HaMikdash together. Bezrat Hashem. Amen. Amen. And speaking of Nashim Sukhaniyot, as, as you said that, next week we have a very, very special Speak Up series with um, Rabbi Tovia Singer from Outreach Judaism, with uh, Shannon from Benenu, uh, myself, I will be there on the panel, uh, Rebetzin, uh, Rabbanit Sarah Cohen. I said Rebetzin and Rabbanit, yes. Um, who is also known as Kinneret. She was a singer, uh, Jewish singer, um, legendary. I know her. She's she'll she'll will be on the panel speaking Torah and a couple of other guests who will be here on the, um, we have a, we're calling a, an emergency type of meeting, I guess, you know, just like we're calling these emergency meetings for the hostages and these rallies, you know, to, to, to speak out, to, to come together and to speak out about the, the harm that Hamas is doing and to, to reclaim our people back, to bring our people back. We should also be doing it on the spiritual side, you know, leave our people alone. Leave our people alone on the spiritual side because we need all of these souls. We need to all be present when the time Gevulah comes. So it's a call. It's a is we're going to be speaking about all of this uh, to educate, to let people know, and hopefully uh, our purpose is for people to speak out, speak up. You know, you see it, or if you hear, stop following organizations that are Christian funded, and you know because they're going to end up putting messages through your feed you know learn when learn about that red alert like whenever you hear something you know this is the purpose of this um of this talk next week is to just be educated so thank you shira so so much um this is a wonderful discussion guys follow shira um shira on her page and my page as well and you know let's all serve god with that fire Amen. that we brought with that Amen. fire let's get that up there and elevate it thank you so much
<laughs> and also, I just yeah. wanted to add, um, whatever mitzvah, each neshama has a specific mitzvah that they really connect to. And when you are able to tap into that mitzvah, whether it's Shabbos or whether it's giving one coin into the tzedakah, whatever it is, it, you might think that it's small, but it is so big, it is so massive, and it is able to turn turn all the darkness into light because darkness is just absence of light. So it may seem that your one little mitzvah that you connect to, that you do with your whole heart, it may seem that it's small, but it's not. I promise you, it is so beautiful and it makes tsunamis up in Shemaim of holiness and it makes a big ruckus and it just, it's really, really special. So continue to do those mitzvot and continue to learn Torah. And just continue to be you because you're amazing and we love you and that's the show. See you very soon here in your life. Amen. Bye guys. We love you.